Hi guys. Good morning. Thank you for for being here today. I I know that we just met, but I can bet that we have a lot in common. Oh. Testing. Oh, do we work now? Are we on? I think we're working. Great. Okay, well, we'll pretend I walked on. <laughs> we'll do this again. Um, I'm Kim Kalp. I'm so excited to be with you guys today and to learn a lot. There's a lot of great speakers and a lot of great sessions coming up. I'm, I'm pretty excited. But even though we just met, I can guarantee that there's a lot that we have in common. And I can also bet that I can know pretty much every single person's reaction in this room if I were to say one phrase. And you might say, Kim, there's so many people in this room. How could everybody have the same reaction? But watch, and you will. If I were to say to all of you, uh, should we just use the handheld maybe? But this does look fancier, right? Cool. Um, and that question would be, can I get a volunteer? right? If I said that to all of you, it would instantaneously <laughs> cause everyone to, their eyes would widen, right? Some of you would visibly start shrinking in your seats as if maybe being two inches lower will prevent you from being called on magically. And that doesn't even get to the inner dialogue, which goes something like, no, 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 not me. Oh, dear God, don't pick me. Okay, we've all... <laughs> We've all been there, and that's all been us. And what's so crazy about this is that we have this reaction no matter what. Even if we're in a new situation, we have this reaction. Or more surprisingly, we have this reaction even when it's a situation that we're really good at. We're, we're actually perfect for. And I'll give you an example. I went to karaoke this weekend down at Sing Sing, and there was a group of about 20 of us. And you guys all know this. If you get a group of like 20 or so friends together, there's always that one person in the group that can actually sing, like is actually a good singer, did choir, did chorus. The rest of you are god awful, maybe good in your shower, but there's the one person that can actually sing. And what happens? Everyone gets around that one person and they're like, no, you have, John, you have to sing. You're actually the best singer. And what does John do? <gasps> no, 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 not me. No, 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 I don't wanna go. Even though he's actually the best, he's actually the most qualified. The instant reaction that everybody has is no. Not me, don't pick me, I don't wanna go first, I don't wanna step up to the plate. Even if we're the best ones for the job. Which by the way, is the total opposite reaction if I asked you to talk about your best friend. Because if I asked you to tell me a little bit about your best friend, you guys, the list would be a mile long, right? Because the hardest person that you can convince that you deserve something is you. You'll talk all day long about your best friend and how great they, is, they are and all the things that they do. In fact, you'll have a laundry list. Funny, sweet, nice, kind, smart, all these talented things, but not for you. You won't talk about yourself the same way that you talk about your best friend. And why is that? And what does that prevent us from doing and getting? And it's really hard to do, but I've come up with two quick ways to make it really easy to talk about yourself. Because it's hard, right? We're taught to be, you know, don't be boastful, be very humble, we don't want to brag, nobody wants to brag. But the truth of the matter is we have to start talking about ourselves like we talk about our best friends. And there's two ways that you can do this, and they're quick, and they're easy and I've tried them and let me tell you guys it is way easier when you use these two simple tools and those two simple tools are using names and numbers it's 
really simple, it's really easy, and the great thing is it's factual. So when you say things like somebody's the best at something or you're in the top, what does that mean? Best of what? Best in New York City? Best in New York State? Best in the United States? In the world? Best is a really loose term, and what does that mean? But when you use names and numbers, it makes it really easy to talk about yourself. And I'll give you a personal example. So when I used to go to conferences like this, people would say, what do you do? And I would say, well, I started a marketing agency and I work with some of the top entertainers and sports teams and brands, right? Super vague, why? Because it's hard to talk about yourself and you're taught to be humble and you don't wanna brag. But what does that mean to the person who I'm talking to? They're thinking, hmm, top sports teams. Okay, mm, there's a minor league near my hometown. Maybe she works at the minor league. Or, um, I don't know, brands. Are those like startup brands? What does that mean? I don't understand. Now, when I go to a conference like this or a cocktail party and someone says, what do you do? Which, by the way, in New York, is like the second question you're asked after what's your name? What do you do? Now I say I started a marketing agency and I work with a wider range of clients from Katy Perry and Paul McCartney to the New York Mets and Comic-Con. Boom. Instantaneously, it sets the field. Those names can communicate the caliber of people I'm working with, the scale of what I'm doing, and it's a sentence. And it's not being boastful. It's not saying I'm the best or the top. It's just stating facts. These names can be so powerful, okay? And numbers, numbers can be really hard too. So a real life example for me, less than 2% of women owned businesses ever make more than a million dollars in revenue. Like ever, like hard stop. They don't make more than a million in revenue. And we did that in 11 months. These are just numbers. They're, they're numbers and they're stats about the business that can really help propel you in a powerful way. And I guarantee you, that if you implement these two things today, the minute you walk out of this room, it's gonna change the game. And the easiest, easiest layup I have for you is if you opened up all your phones and you opened up your LinkedIn page, my guess is that I would have a field day with your LinkedIn. I would have a field day adding in names and numbers. And I'll give you a real life example. So this is my LinkedIn. If you go on my LinkedIn, this is what you will see. And I highlighted in the, the faint red color, the places where you can add those names and numbers. So it's not just that I work with lots of clients, I work with over 100. It's not just that we reach some fans, it's that we've reached millions of fans. And it's naming those names and finding opportunities to put in those numbers. Because what makes me so passionate is when I see people with LinkedIn's and resumes that say, well, we worked with lots of clients with sizable budgets. You worked with 10 clients, you worked with 100 clients, your sizable budget was 100 gram, was it a million? Like, what does that mean? I, I don't know. So adding in those names and numbers can be a quick and easy, powerful step to help you talk about yourself. And it's really quite simple and it's not boastful and it doesn't mean that you're bragging. If I showed you this pizza, which by the way, I'm already hungry just looking at it, unless you are a complete heathen, you would probably start from the bottom and work your way up towards the crust. Okay, I don't know who starts at the crust, crazy people, but you would start at the bottom and work your way up. And that's exactly how PR and brand building works. Because you might say, well, Kim, names and numbers are impressive, but your names and numbers are Katy Perry. I don't have Katy Perry, so I can't start with that. Great, don't start with that. I didn't start with that either nine years ago when I started. But you start small, just like most things in life. I don't walk into the gym and pick up a 100 pound weight. I walk into the gym and I pick up the fives and then I pick up the 10s, and then I pick up the 15s. You can't code a whole website. You start with one line of code, and then you work up to two, three, four, until you can code a whole website. And it's the same way. You start small, because the best PR 
and the best resume builders are the awards that no one has ever heard of. No one's ever heard of. And I'll give you an example because everybody gets really caught up in, oh, these Forbes lists and ad age and industry insider and all these big flashy names and those are great, but they're not necessarily needed to still be powerful. And I'll give you an example. So we'll all use our imaginations right now. And let's pretend that you are a magazine editor in the state of Texas, and you are picking the top 40 most successful people in Texas. Top 40, okay. You have 39 of them already selected. Great, you're looking for that last 40th person who's gonna make the top 40 list. And you're looking at candidates and across your desk comes candidate Joe. And you're like, wow, Joe looks super impressive, right? Joe's sold $20 million worth of real estate in Austin and he's 26. And you think, wow, Joe would be perfect for my list, my 40 under 40 list. Joe would be a smash. Look at, look at all he's accomplished. And you put a big star on Joe's name and you put him to the side because you think, that's it, I've found it. It's gotta be Joe. But then, as you're going through the list, you come across another candidate, Janet. Janet has also sold $20 million worth of real estate in Austin. She's also 26. And you think, wow, Janet and Joe, they're tied. They've both sold all this real estate and they're both 26. This is so incredible. But Janet has been named a top 25 to watch by Real Estate Austin. And Janet was previously named Young Person of the Year by the mayor of Austin. And Janet was named Top 10 Broker by Austin Magazine. Now, who are you adding to your 40 under 40 list? You gonna add Joe or are you gonna add Janet? You're most likely gonna add Janet. Why? Because you look at this list and you think, wow, she's been vetted by all of these other people. This is incredible. Of course I want somebody as accomplished as Janet to be on my list. And what Janet did is she started small. Some people might look at Real Estate Austin Magazine. Well, that's not Forbes. That's not Inc. That's not Entrepreneur. But it doesn't matter because just like the pizza pie and just like the weights and just like the line of code, you start small and it's a snowball effect. And as you get into different awards and different things, it all compiles. If you wonder how people get these laundry lists of awards, it's because every award looks at their last award and says, well, you know, if it's good enough for Real Estate Austin, it must be good enough for the mayor's office. And if it's good enough for the mayor's office, it must be good enough for Austin Magazine. And if it's good enough for Austin Magazine, it must be good enough for Texas Magazine. And on and on and on and on. And that's the key. It's starting small. It's starting with the things that no one has ever heard of. And that's the key when you really start getting into these opportunities. And I always tell people, there are so many out there. Look for things that are citywide. Look for things that are statewide. Look for things that are in your region. Look for past awards from your high school? Is there an alumni of the year from your college? Is there a sorority or fraternity you were a part of that gives away alumni awards? I mean, there's tons of opportunities, but you have to go out there and you have to dig them out and you have to look for them. And that's the thing, don't reinvent the wheel. Okay, these things are already out there and the best way that you can find them is to find somebody who's just a little bit ahead of you and make them your new mini role model. And I say mini role model because when I talk to people about role models and I say, who's your role model? You always get these big answers, right? Oprah, you know, and like Richard Branson and Mark Cuban, and those are great. Those are amazing role models. You should absolutely have those role models. You should absolutely keep those role models. But I encourage what I call mini role models, which is somebody that's just a little bit ahead of you that you can basically copy their homework, 
It's like the only time in life where copying homework is 100% acceptable and encouraged and appropriate. If you just copy their playbook, it makes it so much easier. And we do this all the time, again, without even knowing it. If you were a freshman and you were really looking forward to sophomore year, but you were a little nervous and you wanted to know what to expect, would you talk to a sophomore or would you talk to a senior? Well, you talk to a sophomore, right? Because they just went through it. Again, that mini role model, they're right there. If you're pregnant, you're wondering what the heck is on the other side of this? What is the newborn gonna be like? You're not gonna talk to your friend who has a 10 year old. They went through that 10 years ago. You're gonna talk to your friend who just had a baby and say, what the heck am I in store for? Okay, these mini role models, that they're just a little bit ahead of you. They're a little further along. And what, can, what advice can you get from them? What copying playbook can you manage to do? What advice can you glean? That is gonna be the game changer. And if you're a manager and you're looking to get into a senior manager position, again, you're not gonna role model after the CEO. You're gonna role model after the senior manager so that you can get that next position. And that is that mini role model that you can implement and copy the game plan. Because here's the thing, when you look at hitting home runs, whether it's in PR or whether it's in building your brand, the best way to hit a home run is to step up to the plate. It's really hard to hit a home run from the dugout. Very difficult. And it's very hard to hit a home run when you're only getting out of the dugout once every couple months. You wanna get up to home plate as many times as possible so that you can try to hit a home run, so you can keep getting those swings in. And so my challenge to you is the next time that you hear opportunities like, can I get a volunteer? Or who wants to go first? Or who should apply for that award? Or who wants to present to the marketing team? Or who wants to give the keynote at the sales conference? My, my passion for you is that I hope you raise your hand because those are chances to be at bat. That's your batting practice. And the minute you step up to the plate, when you raise your hand to those opportunities, to those experiences, that's what's gonna get you in front of the crowds. That's what's gonna get you into the promotional atmosphere. And those opportunities are so powerful, so powerful. And so your biggest wins, again, will come from overcoming the urge to shrink, shrinking at no, not me, no, no don't pick me. When you encourage to be picked, when you put yourself out there, that's when the brand building and that's when the awards and that's when the PR really hits home. So thank you guys so much for sitting with me today. I appreciate it. I think we have like two minutes for questions or three minutes. Yeah, we have I don't want to get yelled at. So uh, anyone on the mic? Please raise your hands and I'll actually come back. Considering I just said to raise your hand, guys, <laughs> this would be the time to ask anything. I'll give you some prompts, okay? I was on Shark Tank. I always get questions about that. Some Katy Perry questions, at least. Um, besides the Katy Perry questions, what was your first step that you had to take when starting your own business? The first step to starting my own business, well, I feel like it's a lot of first steps. Um, but you mean in terms of like the PR portion or just in terms of starting in general? Something you would classify as like that moment where you had to raise your hand. Mm -hmm. um, I would say really the first time stepping up and saying I'm gonna do this was quitting my job. That's a really scary moment because that's a lifeline. You know, that's your health insurance, that's your 401k, that's your dentist, um, that's your paycheck. And that's a really sort of time where you have to bet on yourself. And you really have to say, you know, I'm stepping forward. You know, you feel like Katniss in the Hunger Games. You're like, okay, I volunteer. Like, I'm going to do this. Here we go. And it's sort of one of those no turn back 
moments, but I think what made it a little easier and I think entrepreneurs get a bad rap for is everybody thinks that entrepreneurs are very um, impulsive and they just quit their jobs and start their companies. And, and I actually think it's quite the opposite. I think as an entrepreneur, you balance risk a lot and risk assessment. And when I first started, I thought I'm 25. I don't have a husband, I don't have a home, I don't have a car that I own, I don't have car insurance. Um, I'm not risking um, a whole lot in terms of there might be somebody who starts their business who has a mortgage and three kids and college to pay for, like you're risking a lot there and I, I totally recognize that. But for me, it was a completely dis different situation and I knew that if in six months this all blew up horribly, I could get another job. You know, like the only thing I was risking was time and like falling flat on my face, which at that point I, the risk was, okay, if that's what happens, then I'll get another job, but I'll know that I tried. And I think that's the hardest part is really saying, I'm, I'm actually gonna step out and try this. Thank you for asking a question. So just wanted to know what made you decide to do what you do and mm -hmm. come up with this idea mm -hmm. and also like to know about your Shark Tank experience <laughs> and how you got funding eventually if, if that was your main source of raising capital mm -hmm. Yeah, we've actually never raised capital. So uh, we bootstrapped a good old fashioned way. Uh, so it's been really interesting the journey to get where I am now. I think nine years ago when we started, um, it's funny that, that Randy was up here because that's a little part of the inspiration, but what we were seeing is, you know, uh, platforms like Facebook, you know, when I take people back to 2011, you know, there's no such thing as Instagram, no Snapchat, no Spotify, like the world we lived in, in terms of consuming entertainment was very different. It was like Pandora iTunes and Facebook and but what we were seeing was wow you know these fan bases it used to be that on Facebook back in 2011 Beyonce's team would put something out once a month then what we were seeing was like huh they've increased to once a week now it's once a day now it's once in the morning once in the afternoon and it was sort of like feeding the bears right and if you keep feeding the bears content the bears are going to keep coming <laughs> over and over if you keep giving them food. And what we we're seeing was as artists and sports teams and brands started to put out more and more, there's more and more consumption. And that's when you see all these super fan groups like Beyonce's Beehive or Katy Perry's Katy Cats or Taylor Swift's Swifties. You see these people that are, again, just leaning forward, consuming, 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 consuming. And with every new platform, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, or Twitch, the list goes on, um, they're just forming closer and closer bonds to these individuals and sports teams that certainly when I grew up, you never had that sort of access. You know, you never cared what um, boys to men were eating for breakfast or what the Backstreet Boys nutrition plan was. But now that's common. What did Ariana eat for breakfast? And who's her trainer? And who did her hair? And how's her makeup line? And what did Kylie wear today? Like, it's such a common, Thing that when we started the company, we we're like, I think these super fans are gonna grow. And lucky for us, it was a really good guess because they did. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Um. <laughs>